Hey yo, what is going on viewers of the tube? If you don't know by now, my name is Tyler, sometimes called Chico, and welcome to the show that dives right into the rabbit hole and brings you the information no one else wants to talk about. It's time for Chico Crypto. If you have been watching the channel for the past six months, I've been putting the heat on two crypto projects who are closely tied together, and I believe are working together to suck out as much money in the space as possible, even in a bear market. I'm sure most of you have guessed by now what two projects I am talking about and who their leaders are, Justin Son of Tron and CZ of Binance. Last video I put out a little update on the BitTorrent ICO and how CZ basically tweeted out that they were indeed running a good old fashioned pump and dump. And boy has it pumped, market makers pushing up the price while retail investors seeing the gains are falling for the scheme. Everyone, this is not natural. We are in the depths of the bear market and no coin should be growing by 800%. And with the current circulating supply, puts a coin above an $83 million market cap. And if we took the entire supply, it would give it nearly a $1 billion market cap. Whoever thinks this is natural is fucking insane. This is a project that just came out of ICO, does not have a working product or anything to show. All it has behind it is two very slick snake oil salesmen, Justin Sun and CZ, who are pushing this coin up using market makers on Binance and now on other exchanges like Upbit and OKX. How about some proof that CZ has connections to OKX, leading to the listing of BTT? Li Zhaoli, famed Chinese Bitcoin investor, had secret recordings taped where he talked about many projects, including calling Justin Sun a scammer. But this is what he had to say about CZ. Zhao Chengpeng is not a good guy. He used to have dirty deals with Zhu Mingxing, founder of OKX. I mean, it's really simple to tell. Just take the price chart and look at the volume flow. Volume was high initially on Binance while creating their first run-up. Then volume dropped off like a fly because no one gives a shit about this coin except Tron fanboys. Then new exchanges come in with new market makers and bot manipulation, and the volume explodes. Just look at the historical data. First days of trading, mass and volume above 188 million, as Binance's market makers have their way with the price. Price dies, as no one gives a shit, to 33 million, and then 16 million. Then here comes the market makers, once again, 95 million. Next day, 357 million. And as of yesterday, above 641 million dollars. Unnatural? Oh hell yes. I mean, if these are really only the retail investors naturally pushing the price up, they wouldn't have waited for it to be added to an exchange from their country like OKX or Upbit. They would have just used Binance since it's an international exchange and got it at a way better price. Or if they couldn't, just use a VPN. Everyone knows how. Now here's where things get suspicious to me. Using the block explorer tronscan.org, I found the BitTorrent token, total supply of 990 billion. And then we scrolled down, it says the circulating supply is 990 billion. So I was like, what the fuck? So I dug into the issuer's address seen here by copying it into the explorer. Changed the slider to show non-TRX transactions. And yes, there are 76 pages of transfers from the issuer. I exported it into an Excel sheet and looked through every address, and it seems like the tokens were sent out in multiples of hundreds of million without any of the addresses being the same. You can do this yourself. Now, according to the token release schedule, these coins are not supposed to be released on the open market, yet they are transferred to over a thousand different addresses. What the hell? I mean, I know you can have different addresses to hold tokens, but over a thousand? That does not make any sense and gives me an impression this token release is a bunch of bullshit. If you are a Tron or BitTorrent fan, I would demand to know the addresses where the reserves are held so you can track them because I have a feeling this was done deliberately to make it harder to track. All I gotta say, something is up with this and it does not feel right. Which leads us into our next juicy details for the episode, the dirt on Justin's son. I already got dirt on CZ in a previous video. If you want to check it out, click the tag above and it's in the description of this video. And I have more coming for CZ, a bombshell. But Justin's past hasn't been talked about much on this channel. So let's get the shovels and start a digging. What was Justin's son doing before he started Tron? Well, of course, uh, hustling around and using a position he had to gain much more influence and sway, especially in China. Justin was hired by Ripple Labs in 2013 to be representative for the Chinese markets. 
Okay, nothing super weird about that. But Justin took it to another level, calling himself the CEO of Ripple, as seen in this video here. Pewo 而创业领域呢是拓展人类的未知和拓展一些崭新的领域需要创业的领域呢全都是那些刚刚诞生的领域所以它肯定不可能跟你的这个大学所学的专业是匹配的你一定要去接触到那些真正欣赏你的投资人